Oh, if you've seen Quiet on the Set, you know, that great documentary that the that just came out. These directors, producers did a fine job of getting some of these then young people to talk to them about the exploitation that, that went on at uh, that network. And it's frightening. But again, when you have unchecked access uh, by adults to children, you create the opportunity for exploitation. And there's no parent on the set. Nobody's looking out for the kid and the kid's there to try to satisfy, to try to, you know, please the adult and it creates the environment uh, potentially for exploitation. You mentioned they're uh, quiet on set. Um, absolutely heartbreaking documentary and, and the account particularly of, um, of, of Drake Bell's father no. who noticed quite early on uh, some warning signs and almost found himself ostracized um, from oh, yeah. the from the entire group of uh, and other parents included, and you see stuff going on in in such you know uh, a company like that that is so obviously child oriented. You think that measures would be in in place to to support parents in that position? Did what we saw on that documentary um, shock you in any way, or were you not surprised with all the experience? Well, you had? I think it's it's shocking. Nothing surprises me anymore. Sadly, I think it's shocking that that was allowed to happen at a major ch child's network, children's network. Yeah, it's shocking. It should shock everybody. Surprising? Not necessarily to me. I mean, the, these, you know, whispers have been around for many years about this sort of activity. And, uh, you know, like all this stuff, uh, whether it was our, you know, investigation years ago that was on Discovery Plus on Onision, you know, the, the big content creator who was alleged to have, you know, exploited young women or, or any of these others, Peter Nygaard or, or Quiet on the Set, you know, you have to commit to this project for a significant period of time to get the access that you need. And, and I think Drake Bell was incredibly brave to come forward. And, and obviously it took the directors and producers of this project, you know, some time to gain his trust and to have discussions. And, and, and he did it. And he spoke for a lot of other children. He spoke for a lot of other survivors. And this is something that he could have just moved on and, and, and never talked about. And that would be his, his right. But the fact that he did share this, I think is gonna help a lot of other survivors cope, heal, and perhaps come forward. I mean, one of the things that, that touches me most about the entire predator franchise is that almost weekly, if I'm out and about here or anywhere, somebody will approach me and say, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And I said, absolutely. And, and, and they'll say something in the, along the lines of, you know, thank you. Uh, something happened to me as a child. And every time I see you confront one of these guys, it's a victory for me because my guy either wasn't confronted or wasn't punished or disappeared or we never found him or, you know, law enforcement didn't act, whatever it was. But that is the most gratifying thing to me about all of this is that it gives a victory, a win for survivors. And the survivors are the, the heroes in all this because they're the ones who have to come forward and, and break the cycle in their own lives. And it's, it's not an insignificant thing to do.